John, how are we doing out there, buddy? Awesome. We are ready to go here. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm looking forward to tonight. Um, for those of you guys who don't know how I got started on the internet, not that it matters to anybody out there, it was literally understanding how SEO worked, which stood for search engine optimization. And through that, those guys that I start to learn from. Um, I, I met him at a conference, is like hundreds and hundreds of people are there, you know, got a big old stage. Um, and John's up there as the expert in the room to talk about search engine optimization. He's like the godfather of SEO. And this, this, is, this is going back a few years. This is, I want to say, like 2008, I want to say. Um, and, you know, th this now it's been 10 years since then. I've gotten to know John a lot better. Um, my business has grown, his business has grown. Um, but it, it grows because you get a chance to be around people like John, um, you know, and he's very given of his time. So tonight you guys have opportunity to also ask John whatever questions you want. And we actually wrap up after the training portion of this. So please stick around. Um, you have an opportunity to ask somebody who literally charges thousands of dollars for his time. Um, this is absolutely free. Um, you know, you can go ahead and take the information John's going to share with you guys tonight and run with it. Go make Go, go make ma massive changes in your own business and stuff like that. Uh, but also making sure if you have any questions on, you know, search and optimization or running a successful business and stuff like that. Um, John is one of those people that's a great mentor and a friend of mine uh, who I highly recommend to spend some time with tonight. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be there the whole time. So if you do have questions and answers, please put them in the Q and a box down below. Um, and I'm also going to be monitoring that as well. If I can answer real quick, I will. Uh, but I'll make sure that every single question you ask, John will actually answer. So that's my promise to you tonight. Um, for those of you guys who are actually here live right now, um, I can't think of somebody better to talk to you about search engine optimization. Like I said, I got started doing this stuff about, you know, going on 15 years ago is the first thing I learned. Um, I started actually making money online in the internet, made money the first time in my life where I didn't know where it was coming from. I didn't know where my customers were coming from. I just knew they're coming from Google, you know, and uh, Yahoo at the time, right? And I just remember like seeing these like checks start to roll in and started seeing people. It was really cool. I had the software, it went on my website, showed me all these different words people are searching for, finding my website and showing up and stuff. And I could actually see these people coming in into my store and then buying stuff. And then it would just show up in my bank account. And at the time I was in the Marine Corps and I just thought this was the coolest thing because I had this little side project that was bringing in like $500 at the time. I didn't know what I was even doing really at the time. I just followed the, the system and, and it actually worked. Go figure, right? Just like a Marine, I just followed all the steps and, you know, had success. Uh, and John is no different, guys. He literally had to reinvent himself in, in business on that side of it. And that's how he ended up here. So if you're a person right now and this is the first time you're hearing about this and you're wondering to yourself, like, you know, I'm new at this. It's okay because we're gonna talk at it even if you're up here at this level and know everything, right? Or if you're all the way down here and you're like, you're a brand new person that's never been exposed to this stuff, type of stuff before. Literally guys, just have all your questions are gonna get answered tonight. I can guarantee you that if you stick around and ask whatever questions you have, uh, John will answer them. He stayed on for three hours the other night, he said, talking to somebody's audience, like helping them answer questions. And stuff like that. This guy loves this stuff, he knows this stuff, he cares about people. Uh, and I just, I'm glad to, you know, I'm honored to call my friend, uh, John, I appreciate you coming out tonight and sharing with my, my tribe here. Uh, and I just, I'm looking forward, buddy. I, I got my pen and paper. I'm going to be asking questions too. Uh, so John, take away, buddy. Well, cool. Hey, thanks for the intro there. And, uh, and this really is exciting stuff. You know, I, I do love sharing this stuff and, you know, like you said, I, I've been doing SEO and teaching and training since, God, I think I started about 2008, about when you mentioned there, but I've actually been doing this stuff commercially for businesses. It goes all the way back to like the mid 90s. And, you know, I started off in web development and then moved into hosting. And as soon as I got a bunch of, of hosting customers, the first thing I thought of is what are these guys going to need next? And it was search engine optimization. And back then, we didn't even know what to call it. So I, you know, like Daryl says, I have been reinventing myself every time. It seems like every time I turn around, I'm doing something new. 
and that's, you know, as entrepreneurs, that's just kind of what you got to do. You know, if you want to survive and you want to thrive, you need to look and keep an eye out for opportunity. You know, there's opportunity that will come and go every day. And you just have to be aware of it and be able to evaluate it, know if it's a good opportunity, a bad opportunity, and adapt to it. So that's kind of like, you know, as a baseline, that's like really good advice. That's probably the best advice I could give you guys as far as like, you know, from a business standpoint of getting into this stuff. So let's get started here. And what I want to talk about today, it's obviously search engine optimization, but there's a lot of different aspects to SEO, as we call it in the industry. And one of the biggest keys here is getting the right keywords and what we call buyer keywords. Google has gotten really good. I'm going to talk a lot about how Google works tonight. And Google has gotten really good at figuring out what the intent of someone is that starts a search. So you'll notice like when you start running a search on Google these days, you notice the drop down box. It starts making recommendations. Those recommendations, those are coming from past experience. Oh man, I got a sneeze. <laughs> Sorry about that. God bless you. Man, I could feel that one coming on. But anyway, they're, they're trying to anticipate um, what you want when you start a search. And they get this because, you know, we're talking about AI, artificial intelligence. And they've been watching everything that everyone's done since about 2006. So they know, like, when somebody starts to type in a keyword of how do I play the guitar, they know that that person is probably going to want guitar lessons. So they drop that down and they make it a recommendation. So I'm going to show you guys like how to, how to manipulate that, how to take advantage of that. Remember I said opportunity. I'm going to show you a massive opportunity tonight that you can take advantage of and leverage that in your favor to get traffic. You know, there's a lot of volume of people out there that are typing these keywords in, these buyer keywords, and they are worth a lot of money. You know, I've got a lot of different stories about optimizing for particular keywords and having clients just make a boatload of money off it. So the problem with these keywords, if you've been in SEO or even if you haven't, SEO, getting, your, getting yourself positioned on Google now is way different and it's way harder than it's ever been. And the reason is because of this AI thing it's giving a lot of advantage to big brands because what it sees is it sees these signals. Google is looking at signals from people that are searching and that's how they're determining who's gonna be on top. So when they see a lot of searches for a particular company, they know, hey, that company's popular. People know about them, so we should put them up at the top. So anyway, it's, it's got a lot to do with that type of stuff. But, you know, the way we used to rank, the way we used to do SEO, it's very, very different. Most people don't know how to rank these keywords anymore. Lucky for you guys, we know how to do it. <laughs> Not only do we know how to do it, a lot of our students know how to do it too because of our trainings. And that's what I'm going to show you guys tonight. I'm going to show you exactly what I've been teaching our students over the last year or two. And they've been getting phenomenal results. Like this is Andrew. This is a student. He used the technique that I'm going to show you guys. And he got, this is for a client. He does client work. He was struggling before this. But notice what he says here. He says all their keywords in the top 10, page one of Google. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool stuff. This is something, I'm gonna show you some reports. I'm gonna show you guys a lot of proof that this thing works. These are all reports from clients in different niches, like this is a day spa. The key and the point to all of these different reports is this works on any type of business. Like this is a day spa. You can see the spike over here of the, you know, of the volume of keywords that are now ranking that weren't before. So let's see, here's another one. This is a water sports company. 
same thing, you know, water sports, day spa, those are very, very different. Here's another one, life insurance. Now you guys probably know if you've been doing any kind of business online, you know there's particular terms that are very, very competitive and very, very hard to rank. And this is one of them, life insurance. You'll notice when we started over here, you know, right at the end of June, we popped them up. We basically doubled their traffic. It was, it was crazy. It was almost 100%. Over here, it's 92% more traffic, 8% more keywords. And they already had 400 keywords to begin with. So that's like an additional 32 keywords. That's really, really good in this type of a competitive niche. Here is a law firm. And I show you this one because this is really kind of a, this is a key concept to get if you ever do any kind of search engine optimization. It's this thing called the Google Dance. And some people call it different things. Some people call it the sandbox. Some people call it, uh, you know, a penalty. There's all kinds of different stuff, but the real truth behind it, Google has a, a patented algorithm to flush out people that are trying to manipulate their system. So what happens over here, you notice we get the spike in traffic, it goes up, and then all of a sudden it drops. Google automatically triggers this to see if you'll change. So like if you start doing SEO, let's say you start getting links to your site or you start putting you know, better content on your site or you start manipulating your, your title tags and all that stuff and all of a sudden you get a spike in rank. What Google will do in a lot of cases, sometimes this will happen immediately, sometimes it'll happen months down the road, but be aware of it and I'm gonna show you how to handle it. What you do is you don't do anything don't change. Like if you changed content on your site and you get a drop, don't go change it. Just leave it alone. Let it ride. Act as though you didn't see the drop. <clears throat> that is like the number one thing. It's like that old any perspirant commercial, never let them see you sweat. Eventually it'll come back. Sometimes it'll be a day. Sometimes it'll be a week. I've seen it last a couple or three months actually. But here's what will happen if you, if you flinch, if you give in and you change back to what you had before, they know they got you. You got caught in their mousetrap. So be very, very wary of the Google dance. Like when you're doing stuff, you're going to see ups and you're going to see downs and they're totally natural. It's a very natural thing for this to ride through before it, it really locks in and, uh, and does its thing. All right, so there's the Google Dance. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to get back to the AI thing because that's what happened and it wiped out traditional SEO. Traditional SEO is just out the window now. It doesn't even hardly exist. Big brands are dominating. If you run a search, I mean, it's easy to, to see this in action. If you run a search for almost anything right now, you'll notice that the top of the search is dominated by big brands. You know, if you run real estate, you're going to see Realtor.com and uh, I think it's Twilio and, you know, all of these big, giant, humongous real estate companies. If you run anything for products, you're going to notice Amazon. You know, if it's a home product, you're probably going to see Home Depot or Lowe's or, you know, stuff like that. It's the big brands and it's because of these signals. It's this guy right here. This is what's driving the train. It's artificial intelligence. And the SEO community has labeled this as rank brain. They called it Google's rank brain algorithm. And I remember when it got released, it actually got like full fledged released. And the SEO community was just freaking out. They were literally flipping out because they were getting hit and they didn't know what or why, and they had no idea how to fix it. And I was really laughing inside. I was like, oh my God, you guys, come on. This has been coming for a long time. It's obvious what's happening here. It's not your links. It's not your content. It's not any of the other stuff that you've already been doing. This is new. They're looking at user signals. And it was funny, the, the first thing that 
the SEO world in general identified was bounce rate. They're like, oh, Google hates the high bounce rate. They're penalizing us for the bounce rate. And that was right, but it was just the tip of the iceberg. That bounce rate, what that tells you is Google's concerned with a good user experience. So the bounce rate is that it's the head of what they could see. They couldn't see under the surface. All they could see was that tip of the iceberg sticking out of the water. They didn't know how big it was and how deep it went. And the reality is it goes way before bounce rate. It goes to click through. Like if people are not clicking on your site, that's a big indicator that you're not worthy and no one wants you. So what happens a lot of times people will click on the big brands because they recognize them. And it's just like, it's like this lopsided snowball that is favoring the big brands as it rolls down the hill and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more powerful. And it's harder and harder for the little guy to compete. So it's, and yeah, it's totally unfair. But, you know, as you guys know, in life, there's very few things that are actually fair. And Google's definitely not one of them. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to easily rank. And, you know, not only for just any keywords, but for those buyer keywords. The other thing I'm going to show you is how to do it without fear of getting penalized. You know, a lot of people they have this fear of doing anything that that's going to upset Google and, and get slapped. You know, there's that Google slap or the Google ban, all that stuff. But I guarantee you what I'm going to show you guys tonight, there's absolutely no fear of getting penalized unless you do it wrong. So the moral to that story is let's not do it wrong. Let's do it right. <laughs> so anyway, this new strategy that I'm about to show you, it trains rank brain and it helps you rank because it's training rank brain to show Google that your site is worthy, that people know about you, and it's going to connect that known qualities into that rank brain algorithm. So they start favoring you along with those big brands. They'll start showing you at the top. The cool thing is, I will show you how to set this up. And it literally takes about two minutes of work to implement it. And then it just goes and it does its thing. So here's more. I've got a bunch of these. I'm just going to kind of skip through this. This is a publisher. This is a prosperity site. This is an accounting firm. And really, these things are all the same. It's just more and more and more. It's This one's for facials. But there's, I've, I've got a ton of proof. I, I don't think you guys need any more proof at this point, but I've got a ton of it chucked in here because when I go into certain communities, especially the younger generation, I got to prove and prove and prove before they believe it. But it is absolutely true. So let me tell you a little bit about, I say who we are here. I have a friend of mine that helped develop this system. and. Uh, between the two of us, you know, like I said earlier, we've both been doing SEO since before it had a name. We've driven over 3 million visitors a month for our commercial clients. And I can tell you this for sure, some of Google's earlier algorithms were actually based on us because we forced them to, <laughs> to make changes. And this is one thing I can, I can say very proudly, I've been able to predict every major shift that Google's made. And it's very easy for me because I look at what's going on and I see, all I have to do is I think, well, if I was Google, how would I deal with this? And every time I've been right. And this is no different. I predicted this was coming back in like 2011. So I, I saw this one coming way ahead of the game. But this is my friend Chris Ormiston. He has a program, he's got a programming team, and he actually wrote the program. I brainstormed the idea up, and then he wrote the program that literally allows you to two minutes worth of work, and it's done. It's all automated. So here's some of the companies that, that we have ranked in the past. We've ranked a lot of companies, and, and it says hundreds of small businesses, but I'm going to think it's more like thousands at this point, because... 
I have trained, I don't know how many hundreds of people how to do this and they're doing it for other companies as well. But this is a cool thing. I talked a little bit about this before. Like when you type in the search bar wrestling shoes or anything for that matter, Google drops down this, this recommendation. And what's happening here is it's anticipating what you want. So when you run searches and you connect your brand to something, like you see the arrows there, wrestling shoes, Nike, wrestling shoes, ASICs. Those were two clients that we actually did this work for. And because of what we did, they started showing up in there. They started actually showing up being recommended. And that made a huge difference in their bottom line. And this, as far as I know, I just ran this screenshot just recently. So this still works. We did this probably several years ago. So anyway, this stuff really does work. And imagine for a minute, let's say you were a wrestling shoe company and your name was Nike, just for instance, and somebody clicked on that. That search is so specific to you. When somebody clicks on a search that has your brand name in it, you should dominate that page because what comes up, not only your website, but your LinkedIn profile, your Facebook page, your YouTube channel, all your social media things, you basically dominate the page. So this is so cool. When, when you can connect your brand to a keyword, get it recommended in here, and somebody clicks through, you dominate, you'll own that keyword. It's like there's no one else on the page to compete with you. <laughs> that is really cool stuff. So anyway, on to this thing. Let's call it Google 2.0. Because the Google 1.0, you got to just forget about that stuff for a minute. This is a whole new world, a whole new world that's making this happen. And to figure it out, I went in to crack the code. And, you know, we look at patents. And if you guys are anything like me, a patent's not a real fun thing to look at. It's kind of like this. It's like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is that? It's very hard to decipher. But we've got guys that will go in, read all this boring stuff, and start highlighting things. And all of a sudden, some stuff starts rising to the top that I can now make sense of. One of the things I recognized with this particular patent was there was Google had broken down three different buckets of types of searches. They broke it into informational type searches, transactional searches, and what's called a navigational search. Navigational search is really the key that's driving this whole thing. So for those of you that are not familiar with that, an informational search, that's like, you know, how tall is the Eiffel Tower? It's just, you know, you're, you're just looking for random type of information, not really leading to anything. It's just a question. Now, transactional, that's when you're like searching like for prices. You're, you're ready to buy something. You're looking to actually make a purchase. Those are great. I mean, those are the things that we want to get. But over here, the navigational search, this is what tells Google that you're important. This is where it makes the connection of a type of thing into a brand. And I've got dentist up there, but it's really, it's the name of the dental practice and the particular place and the thing that's important in there. Like for instance, if you were ordering pizza, let's say you went on to Google and you were trying to order pizza. Pizza would be a generic search. You know, pizza near me, that's more of an informational search. But when you start doing like Pizza Hut in your city menu, you're basically doing a search that tells Google, hey, there's a particular piece of content on this page that this person knows about. And if I don't deliver them to the right place, they're not going to be happy. So navigational searches that connect your brand to a keyword show Google that enough people 
know that that keyword attaches to your brand, guess what? They start recommending your brand for that keyword. That's the gold here. That's the real magic. That's what's driving this. And that's what the big brands are getting naturally. This is naturally happening to them. And that's what makes it so unfair. Because if you're a little guy and nobody knows your brand name, how are you ever going to play this game? You've got to be able to figure out how you're going to enter this market and actually play in this realm. Otherwise, you don't have a chance. So here's what navigational searches do, and this is why it's so important to Google. It represents real user search behavior. It shows Google what's actually happening behind the scenes with those users. It shows the user's intent. Like remember a little earlier, I mentioned if somebody goes on to Google and types, uh, you know, how do I play the guitar? They know the intent is typically for getting guitar lessons. So they'll make an educated guess and they'll leap that, that gap and they'll just show that. They'll display that as a search result. Here's the other thing. It mostly used to be about links for popularity. That's how Google would gauge popularity is how many people link to you. But now in the new world here, in Google 2.0, they've kind of shifted gears and they're showing popularity by a number of searches for you. If no one's searching for you, that's like having no links in the old game. So very important that you get people to search for you. It shows Google who's, who belongs at the top, basically. It's, it's that big of an influence. And Here's the cool part. It's almost impossible to manipulate this until now. I'm going to show you how we manipulate this very, very easily. All right. So here's, this is more of a proof thing here. This is an actual case study. Rand Fishkin, if you don't know him, he's a big celebrity in this world. He is one of the guys from Moz.com. And he did a, a test on navigational search and ranking. And here's what he did. He had this, uh, this site, IMEC. That was his keyword, IMEC Lab. And it was number seven. This was at 6.03 p.m. He did a test. He, he reached out to his Twitter audience and he tweeted out, hey, guys, I want everybody that's on to participate in a test. I want you to go over to Google and I want you to type in IMEC lab, scroll down and click on my site, the moz.com domain. So all of his audience did this. Remember this is 6.03 PM, just three hours later, he was at number seven here at six o'clock, three hours later, here it is nine o'clock, he's at number one in three hours. That's crazy. That's what sending these signals into Google will do for you. So that's pretty cool stuff. You know, that means it is true. User interaction signals, this is Google's new weapon of choice. What they're using against the search engine community, the SEO community, and it's how they're gauging who belongs at the top. So it's really cool stuff here. So if you're not doing this, if you're just doing backlinks like you used to and you're doing on-page optimization, you're missing about a third. <coughs> I actually think it's more. I actually think it's more like half, but I, you know, just for simplicity, I made it into thirds here. So this is why SEO is so hard. You know, if you've been doing SEO, it, this you probably feel like this guy trying to push a boulder up a mountain. That is literally what it feels like. You work and work and work, and it doesn't budge. You get to page two, and that's about where you're going to stay. And uh, I know uh, Daryl, he has said, I think, I think he said this a couple weeks ago. He said, hey, where's the best place to hide dead bodies? It's page two of Google, because <laughs> nobody's going to look there. So anyway, SEO is about to get a lot easier for you. I'm going to show you five of the most powerful search signals that there are 
And these make up a third. I really think it's more like a half of Google's rank brain algorithm. And here they are. These are the five new AI factors, artificial intelligence search factors that is showing Google who belongs at top. And it searches from mobile devices. You know, we used to do this from desktop devices and it was really effective for a long time. But then all of a sudden, Google started getting smarter. They, they increased the, the algorithm and they started looking for more signals, how to make this real, how to really figure this out. And they realized that searches from mobile is a big thing. There's a big impact off of that. The other thing is proximity search especially for local businesses, but this is even true of national businesses. Even if you're a national business, Google is under the assumption that local people in your general area know your brand and they know about you, so they're gonna search for you. Navigational searches, we've talked a lot about that. Brand searches, we've talked about that. That makes this totally unfair to the little guys, but here's a huge one. Google doesn't like bounce. They, we call that pogo sticking. Like you'll, you'll hit it, you'll bounce back, then you bounce to something else. Well, they look at where you end up. They look at where does the pogo stick stop? You know, it's like musical chairs. When the music stops, that's your seat. Where is it? What is it? Why is it? So the idea that you can go to Google, run a search, and then not get what you wanted and bounce back to the search box and revise your search and add a brand to a keyword, that is the mountain of gold right there. That tells Google, hey, you didn't give me what I wanted. Let me be specific. Listen to me. I want this particular site. I want this particular company because I want this keyword and I know it belongs to them. So it's a really, really strong factor. They pay attention to that. So, and, and when it's done right, it creates this ultimate trust and authority, and Google will give you top rankings because of it. Not just for that keyword either, for all kinds of keywords. When we do this, we notice that a lot of new keywords start ranking that we weren't even focused on. A lot of keywords that we weren't focused on that were on page two and three, they start rising up. They start coming up in the ranks because of this. It's like, the, it's like the tide in the harbor. When the tide rises, all the ships go up with it. It's not like a few go up. They all rise with it. So this is like a rising tide of your rank. Okay, so imagine you've got all these devices running searches for you, sending these signals in. What that's going to do, it's going to push your site to the top. You're gonna get more listings, more traffic, more leads, more sales, and more profits. That's what this game is all about. Most people, will they'll hit that top listing no matter what. There's like 34% are gonna hit that even if it's the worst listing on the page. So that's where you wanna be. You wanna be up number one, two, or three. That's where the game is played. Okay, so we basically built a machine to do this, to send these signals, and it's called SitePop. And it's a, it's a network of devices. It's a network of real handheld devices, computers all over the world that can run these searches on our behalf. It's totally under our control and it's completely randomized. This is like, this is like a, the ultimate war machine to go to battle against Google. It is stealth, they can't see it coming, they don't know what happened. It's just you beat it like a thief in the night. <laughs> so SitePop, it does all five of those factors that we just talked about. It makes up the, you know, that big chunk of the algorithm that you were missing. And there's nothing else like it. This is the only tool that addresses all of these signals. There's some other tools out there that do kind of a similar thing, but they're not using mobile devices. They're not doing all the things that really make a difference. This is the only one that, that I know of that, that's doing this. 
So it randomizes all of the stuff. It randomizes every search down to the keystrokes of the, of the search phrase being typed into the device. Everything is randomized. These are all real users. It's real phones doing this. It's not proxies. It's not some central server in you know, some odd place. This is real devices all over the US, in fact, all over the world, providing these mobile search signals. It's running navigational searches on Google so you can rank. It's literally training rank brain. This is really, really powerful, really cool stuff. And like I mentioned before, it's completely safe and natural because it is real users devices. This isn't some like proxies and, and all that stuff. It, it's none of that. It's real devices running real searches for you. So all of our customers make up the network. Each customer's device runs about 17 searches a day on each device. They run it on proximity, like the devices that are closest to the business, it will hit them with those first before it kind of goes out in concentric circles. Most of the searches are performed in normal business hours. Now, some of them are done in the middle of the night as well, but a big majority are done in between business hours, local time for that business and it works on all platforms. So we've got it really, really well mixed. This is a screenshot I did a, a, probably a couple months ago when we were just spooling the network up. If I did another one, you wouldn't be able to tell what it is because the pins cover the whole map and you can't even see the earth anymore. <laughs> so it's pretty crazy. Here it is, like we're starting to populate in Europe, in Australia, South Africa, some over in India, uh, Hawaii even. So they're, we're populating this all over. They're all over Canada now. So really, really cool stuff. Here's another example. This is just more, this is in the CBD realm. This again is a really, really tough market. And this is some of the keywords. This is the actual app running on a phone. I did a screenshot of the app on my phone. And all of these keywords, you notice the NAs down there, that's not in the top 100. And these guys were not there when we started this. And after we started running it, it took probably about a month to really kick this thing in gear. And you'll notice this is not that long ago. This was back in, in July. Here's another one. This is for a real estate site. This, was, this thing is really competitive. Notice that the dates, this is like two days apart. You can see a lot of these have moved. Like Crested Butte Real Estate went from 10 to 3. You know, um, the next one down went to 8 from 8 to 7, 8 to 3. One of them went up, 6 to 7. So just within a couple of days, this thing started moving the needle. Here's another one, property management services. This is like just like a week after we put it in, it was already starting to, to chip up some of the keywords. So it really does work. And this is how it does it. It performs a search for your keyword. It scrolls the search results looking for your domain. If it doesn't find you in, in like say five pages, then it revises the search and it adds your brand. So here's the important thing. This, what this does is it shows Google that Google didn't do the right thing. They did not provide what the searcher wanted, and Google hates that. They hate bounce. They hate a bad user experience, and they just realize that they just dished one out. So they don't like that. Next, after it reruns that search again with the brand, it finds your site, it clicks through, and it spends time on several pages just randomly clicking through your site. Ultimately, it winds up on your contact page or whatever page you want to have as your, your last visited page. It stays there for one to four minutes, and then it closes out the browser session. Now, by closing the session, that shows Google that you found what you were looking for, or the visitor found what they were looking for. And Google absolutely loves that. 
That's like the ultimate user experience. So key features of this thing, it, it ranks what we call traction keywords really fast. A traction keyword is a keyword that you're already on page two or three for. We always run those first. We like to try and put those in first so we can gain traction and then we put tougher and tougher keywords in as we go. That is a standard operating procedure in all of SEO ever since the beginning. You don't try and rank keywords that you're nowhere to be found for and you don't deserve to rank for. <clears throat> you go with what you have traction for. It keeps customers longer. If you're in the SEO business and you've got customers and you're not getting them on the first page, they're going to be gone. This will keep them a lot longer because it shows them results. It's fully automated. We have a white label version for those of you that want the opportunity to sell this as a service. We do have a white label version of it. It's real time reporting. It shows the rank right on the phone. So if you're doing this for a client, they can see it like any time of the day or night, which is really cool. And you have full control over your campaigns. So I remember I said that you could set this thing up in like two minutes. So here I'm going to show you how you do this. A project, let me just kind of define this a little for you. A project is a domain. So that's a website. You put in a couple of different brand variations that are attached to that. You can give it up to 12 keywords and then it generates a project code. The project code you put on your devices, on your phones, on your tablets, on your, on your computer. And it's, it's best to connect three devices. Three devices is going to give you about 500 searches a month because each device will give you roughly 166. So we recommend that you connect three devices. You don't have to. You can just connect one if you want to. And, uh, and then searches start coming in for you. So here's all you have to do. This is the control panel. This is literally how you set it up. You give it a project name, which can be anything. You give it your domain. This is your website URL. Just the domain, just whatever.com, because it's going to find whatever comes up related to that domain. Then you put your contact email in there. And then this is where you put your company name or your brand. Your URL can be a brand. Your domain name could be a brand too. I recommend putting at least three variations in there. And the, if you don't know what that means, one variation could be your name. One variation could be your domain name. One variation could be your business name. Those are all brands highly related to that content. So you put those in. Next, you can enter your keywords. You can put up to 12. Once you put a keyword in there, you hit enter and then it'll give you keyword two and you just, you can keep adding them in there. And then your contact page. This is the page you want the, the sessions to close out on. So we recommend putting a contact page in there. And then here, allowed searches, it defaults to 500. So 500 is the default. That's only editable in our agency version. So all of our other ones are 500. That's the that's the allotment per project. Then you put your company address. If you're a home business and you're leery of putting your address in here, just put the city in and it'll geo-target the center of the city. That's perfectly fine. It'll automatically grab your latitude and longitude based on your address and you save the project. It'll give you a project code. You put that into your mobile phone and away you go. It's really that simple. That's all there is to it. And then this is what the app looks like if it's running on your desktop or on your phone. Notice down here, this is a white label under the agency details. It'll show the company name, the contact, the email, and the website for the agency. So if you're an agency and you gave this to your clients, they would see your information there under the agency details. So, who will benefit? I think this is almost a ridiculous slide because I think you guys get it. Anybody at all can benefit from this thing. So I say only everyone. Okay, so 
imagine controlling the best traffic on the planet. And when I say the best traffic on the planet, search traffic, I don't know if you guys realize this, but search traffic is the best form of advertising that there is. It's the new word of mouth advertising. It used to be you'd ask people, you'd talk to people, you'd get recommendations. Now people go to Google. They just say, hey, Google, you know, where do I get this? Where do I get that? It is the new word of mouth. The other thing is when you're in the search, you're showing up at the right time in the sales process. Imagine being there right, showing up when somebody wants you. That is the best traffic on the planet. Any kind of marketing outside of search is called disruptive. It's hard. It's very hard to grab someone's attention. But when they're actually looking for you, you're in flow. You're in the perfect position to do business. You can compete with the major brands like you couldn't do that before. Google had made it totally unfair. You've got something here that no one else has. You've got an unfair advantage. You can get sites ranked when no one else can. You just can't get this anywhere else. This doesn't exist outside of here. And, you know, I think you guys probably know this actually does really work by this time. You know, here I've got just one after another. This was uh, Andrew, a beta tester, talking about how it moved all his keywords up, helped him in the three pack too. Um, here's one, Matt says, I pushed your tool to the limits and came out victorious. Uh, here's somebody that sent in a, a screenshot. They blanked out their information because they didn't want somebody to know what they were doing, but they were very impressed with the movement on this. This was Anthony. He was another beta tester from San Diego. Uh, he had a client and the client was found in number three and the client actually called him and was excited because they found themselves at number three. So he says, this stuff works. Here's Will, another beta tester. Now, Will tests stuff very vigorously. And he said outside of the keywords he was pushing, 50 to 60% of his keywords showed some improvement that he wasn't even pushing on. Here's Andrew, another uh, agency owner. Uh, snagged two top 10 rankings within two weeks of our first client, not too shabby. And these, you know, these just go on and on and on. This is a dentist. There's, a, there's more. He sent two screenshots. Uh, okay, so here's how you would do this if you didn't have SitePop. You could go and you could hire micro workers to do this stuff. But the problem with that, and this is where you get in danger. Remember I said, if you do this right, there's no danger of getting penalized. Well, when you use these micro workers, generally they're in like third world countries like India or the Philippines. How's that gonna look to Google when Google sees a bunch of searches for your site, trying to manipulate your site coming out of a third world country like that? that's not going to be very good. A lot of times they'll use proxy servers. Again, that shows up like a sore thumb. Here's what it would cost you to do that. Mostly you'd pay about 25, 25 cents for a search like that to be done from an actual user. To get 500 of those, it would cost you about 125 bucks a month. That's not the problem. The cost is in your time to manage them and make sure that they actually do it and do it right. That would cost you a boatload of money to manage this kind of thing. So what if I told you that you could get 500 searches a month for under 10 bucks? <laughs> that's, that's what we're talking about here. It's crazy. We're, we're doing this really, really inexpensively. So here is, here's the actual offer. The Pro, we've got two versions available for you guys. We've got the Pro and we've got the Agency. In the Pro, it's $297. It's normally $297 a month. What we're doing is $297 to get in, and then it drops to only $97 a month. That's for 10 projects. 
So for 10 projects for 97 bucks a month, that's less than 10 bucks a piece to have 500 searches coming into each one of your projects. That's crazy cheap. So what we're doing, another big bonus here is we're giving notice the three months free. That is only if you get in on it quickly. This offer is gonna expire. I know it says Friday there, and it's Thursday now. I talked to Daryl about this. We're going to make it whenever you come through here. When you click, you're basically going to get two days. So you're going to get two days, midnight, two days from the time that you see this is when it's going to expire. So in the agency, if you're doing this as an agency and you want to resell this, we're giving you 50 projects. Now, the normal price for that is $4.97 a month. For 50 projects and that's still a deal to have it white labeled and all of that but we're giving it to you for 197 a month after your first month but again we're giving you three months free so for 497 you're getting six hundred dollars worth of service and then it locks in your price locks in at 197 a month uh, the, the link to order, if any of you guys want to order at this point, the link is there at the bottom of the screen for you. So you can hop in on that. Uh, here is the, you know, th this is a massive bonus for you guys. The first three months free, especially if you're doing an agency. I mean, that gives you three months to get a couple of clients in here. You can sell the service for easily for 97 bucks a month easy so two clients and you're paid for you've got your cost covered and you got 48 more to sell or use or whatever so that is just that is crazy that is a huge massive bonus to give you guys three months free service with this thing to get up and running and get results and and get these things sold a second massive bonus is Next week, I'm going to be doing a live case study webinar where I show you, I go through and I analyze campaigns of people that are actually running this and have been running it and show you how to get the best use out of it. If you have questions about how to run an agency business, any of that kind of stuff, I'll address that stuff too. And there's one more thing here for the, this is only for the agencies. We've got a white label app for you guys so it shows up on the on the devices as being from you we also have a wordpress template for a funnel of how to sell this as a seo boost service we've also got a full kartra funnel for any of you that are familiar with kartra it's a marketing platform and we can import a complete kartra marketing funnel right into your kartra account for you that is up and ready to go, ready to sell this thing for you. So again, the link is there at the bottom. You know, if you wanna get in on this, like I said, you've got like two days before that bonus expires. That's three months of free service. So this question comes up a lot is why are we literally giving it away that cheap? And it's a really good question. And I got to tell you, it's pretty self-serving. The answer is self-serving. It's because we want to build the network out. The more of you that get in, the more devices added to the network, the more powerful it becomes. So that's the real reason behind why we're doing it, why we're doing it the way we're doing it, and why it's so inexpensive. So basically, it comes down to this. You know, guys, if, if you want to rank, go to that web address at the bottom of the screen and get in on this. You know, if, if there's any issues, if you get in and you just, you know, you just decide this is not for you for whatever reason, we've got a full 30 day money back guarantee, you know, so there's really no risk to get in on this. The only thing you risk is not getting in on it, not locking in the three months free, because that will be gone. That's not going to last very long. It's two days. <laughs> that is it. So, Anyway, Daryl, is there uh, any questions you got coming from people or? Uh, let me look on here right now. Guys, first of all, John, I just want to appreciate you coming on and sharing tonight. Um, I definitely learned some stuff and I think I might have to go back and watch this webinar again. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I had a, uh, there's one question that came in from Jen. It says, how does this compare uh, to something like what Chris has does uh, in terms of effective and longevity for ranking? Um, if you're unfamiliar where he has some kind of service where he uses blogs and articles and YouTube and Vimeo videos, PowerPoint presentations, LinkedIn, audio clips, social media and exposure. Okay. With a ton of other stuff. Sure, sure. No, I, I know I know the program that uh, that they're referring to. What that is, that is basically that's a link building type of scenario. That's getting you popularity versus links. The problem is if that's all you're doing, you're missing a third of the algorithm. So that's a great thing to do because the more you've got, the more leverage you've got to point Google in the direction that you belong at the top, the better you are. So you should focus on your on-page content, you should focus on your link building, and you should also focus on your user signals. So this, this would dovetail into that really, really nicely. I think if all the people in that network were doing just that, and you came in and did this on top, I think you would smoke them. <laughs> in fact, I, I know you would. <laughs> I really equate this, John, to looking at it like almost like a credit report, you know? I mean, credit report, there's so many different factors. You know, you, you like, you have to have, um, pay all your bills, of course, right? That's gonna affect your credit report. You gotta, you know, balance your credit. You know, you can't spend, you can, you, if you have a credit line of 10,000 and, and you take out 9,000, don't pay your bill down, then all of a sudden your score drops by like 50 points. You know <laughs> yeah. I mean? There, there's all these little nuances that have to do with, you know, your credit report. And doing SEO the way John's explaining it is, is just like that, guys. So if you look at like your, you know, almost like your credit report for, you know, your SEO report, you know, is you've got these different factors in there. One of which is huge, which John just went through, which I hadn't even thought about, John, until you started talking to me the other day. My, my head was like, oh, my gosh. I was, <laughs> I was like, because I was wondering, like, how does that even happen, you know? And John has literally taken this and made it like super simple. Uh, he's he's like the itchy and scratchy of uh, who moved my cheese, and he's always out there. He's always he's always finding the cheese before everybody else. <laughs> um, so guys, if you want to be ahead of the curve, like what John's saying, is you could have something like Chris's program and have something like this on top of it, and you're going to bypass all those other people that are out there. I mean, that's really the bottom line. Yeah, this will give you a huge bonus, a huge advantage over anybody that's not doing this for sure. Yeah. So that cheese thing, it's its funny. That's almost like I know where Google's going to move the cheese before they even move it. <laughs> you do. So you're the you know, uh, Google um, AI SEO expert here. You know, and, and I, I'd like to invite anybody, if you have any live questions right now, if you want to even unmute yourself, I can bring you out live. Or if you just have questions in the chat box, feel free to throw your questions in there. Um, so, John, with with doing this, like, how would one even get started on something like this? Let's say I, I mean, let's say I've got, like, I'm talking about my meditations that you know I have, right? And you and I were talking about this the other day. Um, so, if I wanted to say, hey, I want to go rank my meditations. Um, like how would I even get started on something like that? I mean, like what would I, what would I even do? Sure. Well, the, the first thing that we always do with any client, I don't care what it is, but if they're looking at SEO, what we'll do is we'll run an SEM rush report on them mm -hmm. and we'll see what Google is ranking them for. Okay. Because it gives us a clear picture of what Google thinks you're about. A lot of times you'll find that Google thinks you're about something you don't think you're about and then you got a big problem. Got it. So if that's the case, it might not make sense for you to like just kind of all of a sudden now shift direction. You might have to transition and move that over in a smooth way mm -hmm. so it doesn't look fishy. What, what if somebody's like brand new, just starting out and they haven't even launched their website yet? Okay. Well, the biggest thing I would do is figure out what your customers want figure out what's important to them and build your content around that. Build your site in a way that is not for search engines, build your site for users and your site will be optimized to the hilt because that's exactly what Google's looking for. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the code and the tags and all that stuff, that's all important, but the same rules apply. Like if you're creating your meta tags, you usually create a title tag and a description tag. Those are your two most important tags. And each page of your site has an opportunity for a title and description. They should all be unique. They should be unique to the content on that page. And here's the cool thing is you want to, you're in total control of those tags. So when you write those tags, write the tag as if you're really concerned with the person on the other end, you know, write it to what they want, you know, write it to their buying triggers, their desires, their, their demands, if they have demands, <laughs> you know, factor that in. And then the other thing is have a curiosity factor. Like when you write your description or even your title, what I do a lot of times is I'll truncate it with a dot, dot, dot. Like if I'm offering them something, I'll say, you know, get your free dot, dot, dot. And they'll like, my free what? <laughs> so they have to click it to find out what's free. Now, here's the other thing. If you tell them, click here for your free dot, 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 you damn well better have something free on the other page when they click it. Otherwise, it's a bait and switch, and they're going to bounce, and that's a bad signal. Yeah, it sinks your battleship real quick doing that. Guys. Exactly. So don't try and scam your users. I mean, you need to build trust. So give them good stuff. Give them what they want. Figure that out before you start building your websites. That's the biggest thing I see is I see people hiring web developers, and they have no idea. They haven't done their market research. They haven't figured out who their clients are, who their best clients are, and what's important to them. Mm -hmm. Gotta figure good, that stuff. What would be a good way, John, to figure that out? Like what, it, what clients are looking for before they go out and want to rank for, for various keywords? Well, a lot of it, if you've been in the business, like most people have been in the business that they're doing for a while, if you're in the business, you should kind of know that intuitively at this point. It's kind of a matter of sitting down and asking yourself the right questions, you know, and I know we've got a whole process like that, that we, we call the ACT program. It's an ACT marketing protocol. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do with all of our clients. That's what we do with all of our students. We run them through that protocol and they, they learn marketing from a foundational level. I mean, we take it down to the basics of, you know, who is your market, not who's your avatar. We look at the segments of the market before we start hunting for avatar because we want to figure out what's the most profitable segment. We want the avatar out of there. Mm -hmm. And then once we've identified that avatar, then we start getting into what's important to them. You know, what do they want? What's their timeline? Where do they want to be? What's their desired outcome? And how do they get there? The most valuable thing you can do is create content to help them get what they want. Give as much as you possibly can for free, because the more you give them, the more you push them toward that desired outcome, the closer they get to it, the higher their desire will be to work with you and the higher their amount that they will pay you becomes. Oh, John, I've got a chance to go to your event and I've seen the quality and the people you work with. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, what the, the people we have at your disposal and just in the, the ACT program alone. And I know you have like dozens and dozens of people actually that resell your SEO services. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is, what are some of the ways and, and some of the techniques maybe that people could use to help sell this type of services out there? Um, okay. because a, a lot of it's just education. I mean, like I, before I talked to you about this the other day, I, I didn't know that you could actually get do what you're doing. And I was just like mind blown. So like what would yeah. be a good com conversation for somebody to approach a business owner out there who could sure. turn around and sell this? Because I, I could see a lot of, like, I think it's a really simple, the conversation I have with people is like, Hey, you know, that box on Google where you start typing, you want to show up in there. You, if you want to do that, I got this buddy of mine, he knows how to do that. And you can go like work with him. And they're like, yeah, I want to do that. I'm like, cool. Here's, here's the website. Here's the information, you know, go check it out. Cause I, I believe in what you're doing here. Um, yeah. Yeah. One thing I've one thing I've learned about my ideal customers is they don't care about SEO. And that sounds really weird, right? But 
they don't. They want new leads, they want new customers, they want sales, they want profits. They, they really, they're not sitting in bed at night thinking, God, if I only had SEO, life would be great. Yeah. They're sitting in bed thinking, man, if I could get like five new clients a week, I wouldn't have to worry about making payroll every two weeks. Amen, brother. That's, the, that's, the, that's what's going on in their head. So what I'll do, I never talk about SEO with a client. When I go to make a presentation to a client, I will sit down with them and I'll start asking them questions about their ideal customer. I'll say, you know, like, who's your most profitable type of customer? And what do they buy from you? And how long do they stay? And what's the lifetime value of them? And I really get them thinking about that person. They're painting the avatar in their head. And then I ask them, once they've got a really good picture of it and how valuable that person is to them, I say, what do you think that person would type in if they sat in front of Google and they were at home and they, they needed you? What do you think they would type in? Now they give me that keyword and I say, okay, cool. Let's try some, let's try an experiment. Why don't you type it in and let's see what happens. So I let them type it in themselves and up come the results and they're not anywhere to be found. What happened was I just tore a hole in them three feet wide and they're bleeding. That's a really good time to offer a bandaid. <laughs> but again, I've not talked about SEO. I've just exposed, I've let, I've taken them on a journey where they discovered they had a huge problem. I didn't tell them they had a problem. I let them discover it. I just held their hand and walked them down the path to do that. And then at that point, they're, they're oftentimes going, wow, how do I get here? How do I fix this problem? And then at that point, I say, you know, we have a process. I'm not talking about SEO. I go, we have a process where we can get your site more popular to the search engine so they put you up here so you can play the game so you're not just getting beaten out on this game and at that point it's like if i can tell if i sense that money is an issue i usually turn it around before it even becomes a problem and i say what do you think it's costing you to not be here because usually if they just told me you know their lifetime value on a customer is is five thousand dollars each what is it costing them to not get those customers, have those customers going to their competitors? You know, so when I come in with a $2,500 program, it's a total bargain, you know, because they're missing out on a $5,000 customer over and over and over and over. I can Absolutely. fix that problem. And that's that's a $2,500. A lot of these people are paying monthly at that point. Yeah, 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 a lot of times. Now, we've got a lot of local customers that, you know, they did, maybe they did SEO in the past, but they gave up because it was too expensive. You can literally offer them this service. This service is probably enough to get them up on the first page. And you can offer it to them for 97, 197, whatever you want to offer it to them. We've got people that are doing this on an agency level. I've got one girl that's doing this and she's selling these at $2.97 a month to her local clients. And she has already outgrown the agency. She's on her second agency because <laughs> she sold, you know, if you sell 50 projects at $2.97 a piece, that's about 15 grand a month. And it's costing you $197. That's a pretty good profit margin. I'd say so. <laughs> you know, even if you gave it away, let's say you did it for 97 bucks a month, any local business that you can offer a legitimate SEO service that actually works for 97 bucks a month, that's like a dream come true to them. Because they've had people charging them thousands and not getting them anywhere. And, you know, that it's a no-brainer sale to a local business like that. They can afford 97 bucks a month. It's not going to hurt them. If they're paying 500 or 1,000, they're every month they're gonna be up your butt wanting to know where's my profit, where's the money coming back. At 97, it's like, it's not a big deal. It's mailbox money at that point, they don't even think about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's this is an absolute no brainer for selling it like as an agency. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. John, you mentioned the other day we were talking and you had that one customer 
who was your your uh, he was your neighbor, you know, and and how that guy was struggling and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. you, just, you just swooped in and said what was going on. It's like, hey, my phone's not ringing. And yeah. You're like, well, do you want your phone to ring? And the guy's like, yeah. So you did some of your magic, and all of a sudden the guy's phone rang in and just blew his business up. So there's there's a, I mean, you helped probably save that guy's you know house and you know and everything yeah, he, else. I mean, the guy was, was his business. Yeah, he was. He was literally closing his business up. And I asked him, I said, you know, what are you closing up for? Are you retiring? You're kind of young to retire. And he said, no, he goes, I, I can't afford to keep it open anymore. He said, we just, we're not getting the customers. And I knew what he was selling was still hot. I'm like, well, what are you, what are you doing? What's not working? And he said, well, he goes, my phone's just not ringing. And I said, well, how, what's, what used to make your phone ring? And he said the yellow pages. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> there's a little bit of a shift going on here. And if you're not shifting with it, you know, you're, you're going to go out of business. You're, as you know, you're well on your way. So I said, you know, hey, give me a shot at this. Let me, let me take a crack at this for you. And I, I got his phone ringing again. And it saved his butt. So... Yeah, you guys, and that's the difference is, you know, you might be sitting here and you're thinking like, wow, I don't know, this is for me. But then you might be sitting there thinking, oh, I'm a, I'm a consultant, I've got a half dozen clients, but I know this would actually work for, her, and you're helping them, you know, possibly save their businesses and stuff like that. Because Google is constantly changing and John's just head of that cheese. Um, yeah. he, he gets excited studying that big formula you guys saw on the screen earlier. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Well, that, that's the other thing you get. You're not, with this, you know, you're not just buying a software and off on your own. You've, you've literally got me right there with you. I'm using this, you know, I'm developing this. I'm making sure this works. And I'm also doing a lot of ongoing webinars and education to help you guys, you know, take full advantage of it. You know, yeah, every that, time that, I, I learn something new, I share it with the group. So you yeah, guys, that's, that's a huge thing right there, guys. So you guys get a chance to talk to John going forward where you're getting a chance to work with him, um, you know, when you work on the software, because he wants to get this thing out to everybody um, because the more people that use this, the better. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the bigger it gets, the more powerful it becomes. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm all about power. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Google power. So. That's right. Google yeah. power. Awesome. Well, guys, I don't see any other questions coming in. I just want to thanks a lot again, John, for coming out tonight and sharing some of the wisdom. Yeah, my uh, pleasure. For those of you guys that missed the live opportunity to talk to John, uh, to watch the replay, um, and I appreciate you coming out again, John. So any, any, any closing thoughts before we close down tonight? No, I think, you know, I mean, best thing you can do is, is jump on this. This is one of those opportunities I was talking about in the beginning that, you know, you, this kind of stuff doesn't come along often. And I got to tell you, I've been in this business for a long time. This is like one of the best things I've ever seen. It's the easiest thing to sell. It's the easiest thing to use and it actually gets results. So it's a, it's a no brainer. Yeah. really, And it's priced that way too. Yeah, it, it really is. It's throwaway money for a lot of these companies. They're used to spending thousands of dollars for a type of service like this. And you know, and you, you can mark it up to as much as whatever it is that people are willing to buy, you know? Yeah. yeah. So when you tell them that you can help and show up in that little box, <laughs> and that's, that's, that's gold. You know, I, I can see how I can roll this out across. Like I've got this one doctor we're working with right now. She's phenomenal. And she has a network of like 25 practices, you know, and like each one of those practices is all going to need to get out there. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Wucky had a quick question is, is how long does it take to work? It's that's kind of a loaded question with SEO. It depends on where you're ranking initially, how competitive the keyword is, you know, how it's like, what kind of gap are we jumping over? If you're on traction keywords, like if you've got a keyword on page two, three, four, those keywords, we've seen those move up really quickly, sometimes in a matter of days, sometimes in a matter of weeks. Realistically, though, when I, whenever I talk to someone about SEO, I say you need to give SEO time. SEO takes time to work. Even this, you know, I mean, we've gotten some really fast results with this thing. I don't know if they're typical. 
you know, we see them over and over and over, but with SEO, there is no typical. <laughs> so that's, that's the best I can tell you is, you know, if you do things wisely, if you use this on a site that's got the other stuff going for it and it's just on page two or three, it's missing that third algorithm chunk, that's where it kicks it up really fast. If you have a site that doesn't rank for anything and doesn't, it's not worthy of ranking for anything, that's going to take a long time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. The key is, like what John said, make sure you give it a great user experience. And, you know, if you're, like I used the analogy the other day, if you're a vegetarian, then you're not going to put a bunch of meat on the site when they get there because they're going to be out of there. You know? Yeah. Or to send them to the butcher shop. So, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Jessica asks about upgrading. Yeah, you you are free to upgrade, downgrade, whatever you want once you're once you're in the platform. Uh, Mike had a, or Bucky had another question. How do I find out uh, the required keywords first? I use a program called SEM Rush, and I'll show you that. Like once you're in the program, I have a, a best practice video on the site in the members area that gives a, an exact walkthrough of how to do that. It's really easy. You literally put your domain in and it, 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 it sends out a report to you. That's really easy to decipher. So, awesome. Cool stuff. Awesome. Well, thanks again, John, uh, for coming out and uh, right. sharing with my tribe here and answering questions and stuff like that. It's always a pleasure. Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for, thanks for coming out and being here and having me on and, I just I hope you guys hop in and and take this ride with us because this is a, this is a good one. <laughs> it is a good one. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, we'll close up. I'll get the replay up for you so everybody can get the replay and we'll get uh, get all your people in on this. This is this is a winner. Yep. Thanks a lot, John. I'll see you later. Okay. All right. Bye bye. <laughs>